If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, bringing it. For the first 40 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about Four Sigmatics Lion's Mane Matcha Green wow. Tea that Lion's I love to Mane. take on trigger session days. Now, Four Sigmatic is one of our sponsors. They make mushroom-based supplements uh, that are all natural and quite effective. If you go to foursigmatic.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you'll get a discount on any of their products. Then we talk about my six week contest protocol. He's so fucked. Oh yeah, it's gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> win this one. Uh, and Justin mentions how he likes to drink Fit Aid uh, when he wants something tasty. I need, I need hey, something. Speaking of Fit Aid, you guys see the new text thing that we have with them. So before, instead of these people going now straight to the website forward slash oh, my yeah, pumpkin, cool. take your phone out right now. Literally text. Four seven four seven four seven. Text the word mind pump. One word to that. That. So you put the number. The phone number is four seven four seven four seven. And then boom, you get the hookup. That's right. Two Six. cans for ninety nine cents. That's it. Two cans. Your choice. Ninety nine cents. Then of course we mention Adam stirring up the pot again. This guy's like triple and quadrupling down. <laughs> Let's see. On- Football beating soccer at oh, some point. You uh, guys just feed into it when you get all oh, like sensitive about it. It's beautiful. Oh, dude, it's so I'm, easy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> we, we tell some stories about kicking people out of the gym. We t- I talk about a study on meal timing and cancer. What? Adam goes into his six-week contest protocol. The right way. And then I talk about my experience with BPC-157. And dudes. Oh, what? <laughs> it does sound like a porn yeah. with R two D two. But BBD one five seven. It was my experience. And then we get into the questions. Sal is the most likely to fuck a robot. Don't you yeah. think a robot? Yeah. I think so depends on what the robot looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get into the questions. The first question was, "What is the best way to fix muscle imbalances?" This is like actually there's only discussion. one way. There's only one yeah. way. Stay tuned. Great discussion in this part of the episode. Uh, the next question was, "What are our feelings on using hyper palatable?" quote unquote unhealthy foods in order to try and gain weight when your appetite just won't let you eat more. The next question was, when do we think we're going to see reverse dieting enter the mainstream? And do we have any predictions on what supplements are going to come out of the market to try and accompany this? Or will it ever? That's right. And finally, last question, what are our thoughts on the keto community's use of keto products like low carb breads? Do we think they're good, bad, or are we Stop neutral? It. Are they just trying to sell you Stop some, it. Sell also, you some shit? Also, you know what's ending soon? When is this coming out, Doug? You know what's ending soon? Dude. MAPS Anabolics 50% off sale. The deal of the year. Dude, I'm. it's crazy how many people are. I, I didn't know that didn't have MAPS Anabolic. I thought everybody yeah. would have it by now. It's the no, most, you have to have it. We just surpassed the most units we've ever sold a month. Oh, it maps and a box super pop. Yeah. It's the people were waiting for that. It's the maps program that started it all. It is for all intents and purposes the most effective mass building, strength building, and metabolism boosting program. So if you're somebody whose metabolism is slow, um, you want to re- you know let's say you just finished a contest or you've dieted too much, maps anabolic really ramps up the metabolism. Super effective for that. Fifty percent off. So it's only it's under sixty dollars. And you get full access access to the program for life. Only five days left for this promotion. After that, it's done. It won't come back probably for a long time. Don't be that guy. We girl. also have bundles. These are where we combine multiple MAPS programs for particular goals. Like our one of our most popular bundles is our Super Bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. In other words, you enroll in the Super Bundle, your entire year planned out for you with your workouts and everything Phase that workouts change every three to four weeks. You're following different programs every two to three months. It's pretty awesome. You can find that bundle or other bundles and the 50% off MAPS Anabolic that ends in five days at mindpumpmedia.com. I like your uh, mint and uh, chocolate brown right? combo there. Boom. It's nice. You're like a... You're like a mint chocolate chip cookie. I'm like right now. 100, uh, 100 Viore today. Uh, are oh, you? Is that yeah. a Viore? See, yeah. you found a bunch of cool Viore shit that I did not. Dude, see. I went, I went, I went crazy. You went deep. Yeah. Did, now, is that when we were there that you picked that up, or did you yeah. order that again? No, I did it all there, man. I, I figured we had that. 
I don't know. It, it's all there, so I'm just going to do it. I don't like shopping mm-hmm. like all the time. I just like to do it all at once. Do you know what happened to my stuff? So this is what happens when you... Well, I do I do laundry sometimes and I have kids. And so I think sometimes they leave shit in their pockets. I didn't check. Did the laundry. And for whatever reason, like half my clothes have like these... Looks like grease spots on my clothes. But luckily what? Jessica figured out how to get them out. But I was so irritated. Because I got my like my new fucking Viore sweats. Oh, and I'm no. like... Yeah, there's like a big old grease spot where what my... What was it from? I don't know. I have no idea. Huh. And it was only on my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like at and least like, something in your pocket, probably. I like, don't know. Like one of the kids' chapstick or yeah. something. Something weird, like, like that, dude. Like I was that. so oh, mad. That sucks, dude. I was so mad. Uh four sigmatic green matcha lion's mane powder. I saw you drinking that this morning. It's pretty fucking awesome, dude. Is it new? No. Well, it's the one I always use in the morning. It's oh, the in green? the green can. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. You have you have I've tried that. I it, like it. You like the taste you of that? Like no, it? I okay, don't. I was, like was going to no, say, dude, because no, he was like no. holding his nose. No, no, no. I don't like the taste of it, but I like the way I feel from it. Yes. You've been making me fucking pound it. It's good, huh? Yeah, no, it's cool when I take it. Yeah, no, it's no. a nice little uh, buzz. It's yeah. like a good, awake, sharp buzz. And I'm doing, right now I'm doing, uh, oh, you know, just we're putting it out because we're doing this contest. So I'm going to put out exactly what my protocol is right now. I'm starting to nail down. I'm doing caffeine only on uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm keeping the caffeine for my heavy mm. workouts to keep the, my, my, my body sensitive to it because I like to maximize it, right? Mm. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to use the Four Sigmatic uh, Matcha Lion's Mane in the morning, just a little bit, and then check this out with the diet, right? So I've been doing some research. And, About, and white wine? Huh? About white that was wine. just on the weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that was it. I, that was my mom's birthday. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I'm good now. Yeah, no problem. That was your mom's so, birthday? Yeah, it was my mom's birthday. Yeah. That's why we're up yeah, there. Yeah, you took her to see that castle. Oh, I thought it was just you and your girl. We went up Saturday, and then my mom met us up there Sunday. It was all for her birthday, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. It was thought, planned a while ago. Otherwise, oh, I wouldn't have done it. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. wondering. I thought it was just you and your girl getting away. No, we did that, too, because we're up there, but it was for my- Oh, like, now I feel bad. People yeah. were all talking shit, because I posted him, you know? Yeah. I'm saying yeah. him doing the wine, everybody was talking uh, shit yeah. in my DMs. Yeah. Don't feel bad. And I was like, yeah, I sound so pussy, which will never be able to be. I'm me. glad you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I is- I didn't know it was about your mom. Uh, now I feel a little bad, you know dude, what I'm saying? Like, this is good. Mom, mom's fire. birthday, yeah. This is good, because then at the end, and when I win, everyone's gonna be like, "Oh shit, he even did that too." Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> he can still just, live a normal life. You know what's funny? Yeah. You know why everybody wants Justin to win? Yeah. We're too cocky, dude. Yeah. I'm, st- I'm gonna stop talking shit on the podcast. <laughs> We're I'm gonna like, be I'm all losing, nice now. I'm losing yeah. fans. Yeah. I'm gonna be all humble, dude. Yeah. I'm on. I don't know if I can I, I'm on the hate train right now with the so- Ever since the soccer thing, every- oh, it's fun. I'm gonna bring Bro. back. We love to hate, dude. Yeah. We love to hate's coming Bro. back. Sometimes it's fun. Yeah. So I have, I have some something. Oh, so before I get into that, because I do want to talk about that. I'm I sorry, did I interrupt your commercial? No, it wasn't a commercial. Okay. So here's the here's the protocol. So uh, because I've, I've been doing all this research on fasting. And fasting actually, so far from what I'm reading, causes a lower or a reduced metabolic adaptation response. So when you just cut your calories across the board, metabolism slows down to accommodate. Mm. When people eat high calories and then have a day where they eat very low because they fast, oh, for it, sure, it doesn't adapt quite as much. So what I'm going to do- It's also a motherfucker that way too. Yeah. I know this. I but did that last night, actually. Just blasted my calories way up, and now I'm going for, like, fasted well, today. So what I'm doing is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are my foundational work- workouts. I'm doing kind of an abbreviated MAPS anabolic type program. Because that, for me, MAPS anabolic just, if I especially if I my individualize it, oh, my God, it's just, it's the most effective hands down. Now, I have to switch out of it every once in a while, right? But by itself, it's so effective, especially when I do the trigger sessions three times a day consistently on the off days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, foundational workouts, and those days my calories are high, and I'm going to eat three or four times on those days. Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays are trigger session days. Those days, especially Tuesdays and Thursdays, are going to be probably like a warrior fast, one meal. Yeah, one meal at the end of the day. That's funny. Saturdays so and Sundays, I'm going to use to. I'm going to observe my body and see if I need to eat a little more, a little less, and see what happens. And this is kind of how I did it when I got really lean for my photos for maps anabolic and it worked really really well 
So we'll see what happens. Super funny. Yeah, because is it the lean gains, that protocol that goes from the eight-hour block, or is it the warrior fast? Because I've been doing that it, same Think thing on my gains. off days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for the low to moderate, like, trigger session type days. So, But, yeah, like, the, one thing, too, like, because I've been drinking uh, nitro, and, like, I've been trying to kind of keep, um, you know, some, some nitro and some coffee on hand, but also to – offset that for me to look forward to something i've been drinking some of the fit aid uh just to make sure that um you know it's something else that has maybe doesn't have like the the caffeine in it mm-hmm. but at the same time it's something for me to to, to drink that's you know fit aid has a little bit of caffeine. something to look forward to it's like yeah. 40 well, it's like a tiny million, bit yeah this goes back to what you know we had, we had a little bit of pushback about like you know oh pushing it like it was this big supplement thing oh no, it's, the, just, it's a fucking no, it's a good drink it's right. a natural tasty <laughs> Drink and that's how, that's how I've used it, right? That's how I'm using it. It's like, okay, listen, I want something. I want to drink something that has flavor in it, right? Yeah. I don't want to just drink some plain ass shit, yeah. and it and it has some beneficial things. And it so gives a fuck if it's not fucking forty grams of this thirty. <laughs> I grams know. Of I'm not. I'm not promoting it like it's a goddamn fucking no, recovery no, no, drink no, no, or some no, shit no. that's gonna build a ton of no, muscle. No, Fit, Fit Aid has a little <laughs> bit of caffeine. It's only forty five milligrams. Life Aid has got the. It's got cayenne in it, and you can kind of taste it a little bit in the uh-huh. turmeric in it. It's got a little bit, just enough. To where you can kind of taste it or whatever, but if you drink, if you like that's something, that's my favorite with, one. That's the, the one Life Aid I, one. I tend to do, yeah, the yeah. most is yeah. Life Aid. Yeah, but if you want something with some flavor, yeah, you know, there you go, and it's not artificially sweetened. So back to the soccer thing, and you are just digging yourself a hole out of it. Oh, I just <laughs> so bad. Dude. Why did you? Why are you revisiting it then, right uh, now? You want to go back? Who, the, who all jumped you know, on this? Cir- circle back. No, to it? because I have uh, I have some observations that I was thinking about on the way over here. Because I saw you posted in the forum and you were riling up, <laughs> riling up the forum, which is great. Everybody gets so angry. Right? Oh, dude! It's, yeah. You know what's great? Okay, before you go into whatever you're about to observation studies or whatever you. No, broke, no, it's not whatever, a study. It's an observation you, on that. Whatever you broke down. <laughs> I I now at least this is what I love I love about uh, the division of the three of us and having our own social presence right yeah. is I have my people that are like got my back on all this yeah so half the shit I don't even fucking read it you know what I'm saying they're like hey this is for your argument <laughs> so I just posted <laughs> on the I didn't have time to just fucking, hand feed I was you. driving it over oh, here oh is that what people are doing yeah yeah so I'm just like uh, yeah. I just I'm like oh this you will be great I'll just stir you. the shit up again this morning <laughs> That's funny. and people just get so mad this is I don't understand how this is but I'm like I don't, neither do I. I didn't read it, bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> People get so tribal. Countered. Shit, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was thinking about this. Uh, you know, I was thinking about your arguments. I was thinking about my arguments. And you know, obviously, soccer currently is like something like three and a half, four billion fans in American football. Something like four hundred million. So it's a lot smaller right now. And I was thinking throughout, you know, American sports history. You know, I, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of combat sports, uh, and I know a decent amount about boxing history. Love boxing. Back in the day, boxing gyms were everywhere. They were on every corner, and you had uh, like schools, like public schools had boxing. High schools had boxing, along with wrestling. Um, even some elementary schools had boxing. And oh, parents I already, used I already to put know their, where I know where you're going with your well, argument here. Yeah, and because they, of the dangers and all the stuff that's came they out, they stopped, and so the schools stopped taking. They it. They stopped the, doing it, and today the, the only di- the difference is, the difference is with boxing. You can't. What are you going to do? Slap boxing to regress that? Like if worst case scenario, you'll see flag football on the rise. That's that. The that, sport of football won't die. Dude. That's yeah. my point. My yeah. point is for um, for Amer- so you have to do it this way. You have to look at it this way. And the reason why I think MMA is going to continue to grow and boxing is going to continue to decline, right now the only places you'll find boxing gyms are poor neighborhoods. And that's true. You don't see them almost anywhere else. And it's been like that for a little while. So you have no no schools do boxing anymore. Um, MMA, I think, will continue to grow because martial arts feed into it. Mm -hmm. And things like Brazilian jiu-jitsu and wrestling, which you can totally have your kids do. You're not afraid of them getting their heads bashed or whatever. And then they can continue to do that and grow and then, you know, eventually get into MMA. Whereas with boxing, you've lost that feeder, uh, you know, that feeder system into it. Now, football, American football, arguably one of the things that makes it so popular is the violence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So would flag football be able to take over? I well, mean, it's, just, it's an honest question. I'm not. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't think it'll take over with kids. It's it's becoming very popular. Actually, flag football. Yeah, flag yeah. football is an option for them to learn the game and the um, the dynamic of the game and actually, like you know, like 
pull, put all these plays together and see how this all works. And then that kind of leads into, well, yeah, once they get bigger and they get testosterone and, you know, it's just such a great outlet, like, uh, for, you know, for aggression. And for me, I was, it, it saved me, man. Like I, I was getting in fights and being like a real asshole kid. Yeah. Like I really needed ha- that. So have, have you started watching the new season of last chance you yet? Not yet. Oh, I good. loved that show, though. I watched the other ones. It's on so. the third season right now. Yes. It just, it, it just, I think yeah. it just came up, or at least I just found out because my buddy sent Such it Such a over great there. series. Yeah. Yeah. No no doubt, no doubt, I will never argue this, not in a million years, that there aren't like massive benefits to uh, sports for kids, and especially physical <laughs> sports uh, for kids because, I mean, kids can get organized and do other things, right? They can yeah. get organized and – you know, play games and stuff like that. But the difference with physical well, sports is that when you're in physical pain, and I know this through exercise, and I also did, you know, like I said, I did judo and jujitsu as a kid. When you're pushing your body physically, it it tests you in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so I think physical sports have incredible benefit to yeah. children. So I'm not going to ever argue that there are massive benefits to yeah, and I think like I think too like the evolution of tackling. Like you already see how many restrictions they have on like leading with your head and tackling, like like technique wise. Yeah. Like they're they're changing that whole format. But you know, worst comes to worst, like it, it could look a lot more like rugby. That's where what it's I was like, say. Yeah, like you, the, the, going, the tackling technique is totally go, different. It you, ain't going away. Yeah, you absorb. Shrinking. It's just it's yeah. gonna have to change. Though, Spot, I, think. I mean, bottom line, like, and that what that I won't argue. I already said that I'm the one who believes it's gonna go fucking. Yeah. Virtual. That's where you guys ever seen uh, guys are going to explode and die on there. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) That's where I. Whatever. You know. The point is, it's it's too big, bro. It's too big to fail. Have you ever seen Australian rules football? No. It's the it's the most manly fucking sport on the planet. Do they? What is it? It's. I mean, they don't wear any pads, and they they tackle like. Like I've like they go all in like with their whole body on each other and it's just like it, it's so viciously brutal. So is it football but with no pads? Um, I mean they have their own sort of. Ta- I don't really know the specifics on on the rules. It's kind of a mix between rugby and football. But um, I mean it's. I wish we could pull up a clip have, and show it. I have a sport that I think if we had a producer, we could do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then the audience is going to get bored. You know, we don't need to do that. I have a sport that I think can compete with it. There's this sport, and it's not very popular. It's it's really it's an ancient sport. It exists in Italy. I may have shown you guys this before, but the goal is to get a ball into a goal by any means necessary. <laughs> by any- <laughs> And so they have, they like have these, anything that objective goes, right? is already hella cool, bro. Yeah. They have two teams. That sounds like as they have two really teams, sh- and you can punch people in the head, you can oh, kick wow. people, you can body slam people, whatever you can do to get the ball into the other goal. That's what they. That's what it is. Justin, this looks just like rugby. It, it, it does, does, but wait, wait. This should be like a hit reel. You can also kick the ball, which you can do that in rugby too, right? Yeah, yeah. you can kick it only forward. It looks it's called like a knock on. It, it looks it, closer it, to rugby than it does, it and it even has the rugby, rugby poles yeah. or whatever. D- Doug, look up the Italian. Uh, a, the no holds clip. barred Italian sport. Maybe that'll maybe that'll that'll come up. I want you guys to see this. They beat the crap. Oh, at- you showed us this before. Oh, yes, you yes. brought this up on Mind Pub yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. I forgot about this, bro. Really? It's insane. Yeah, it's just by, like, by any means necessary. Yeah, it's they, just like they, <laughs> it's like a gang fight, and the goal is to get the ball in the other side. And you got guys in there who do judo and who do kickboxing and. Dudes will just stop and fight. <laughs> it's hilarious. Look at guys are boxing off. On, there's not even yeah, no, yeah, no. no it's, nobody's hustling. No, it's, <laughs> but because it's no, it's no. There's no rules. You got to be careful. Yeah, yeah you got to watch out. Yeah, man. you don't want to yeah, just yeah, run yeah. blindly. Head on a swivel. Yeah, it's hilarious, right? What, yeah. dude? I don't know that other one you showed me where they're wearing uh, armor, armor, and they're hitting each other so with weapons. Fucking Russia. Uh, yeah. Russians are crazy. Like that. <laughs> that, that one wins, I think. <laughs> so, do you guys hear? So, I've been, I don't know. I'm sure you guys got a million tags on this too. But apparently, this happened in New Hampshire. I think a man stripped naked yeah. before working out. Damn it! You, <laughs> so you took my my. I had that. Hey, did you? Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, hey, Sal, have you made it in New Hampshire lately? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was this guy me. got like butt naked and goes into a Planet Fitness. What? And, and goes over I to the this. yoga mats and starts doing yoga and like, naked. They, yeah, yeah, and they and approach him, and he's like, "I thought this was a judgment-free yeah. zone." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yes," I was like, "That's the ultimate troll, dude." Yes. I guarantee he did that just for, you know, like, oh, a hundred percent, just the reaction. How did they get him out? 
Uh, they, cops. The cops, yeah, yeah, they took them. Have you dude, Arrested have you ever had them. to throw have you ever had to throw someone out of the gym and you but you physically didn't want to touch them? Yeah, yeah no, I've I've told stories of having to get the cops to come get them for sure. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. yeah. I had to get a guy out of the there was a guy in a, in the sauna who this woman's like uh he just took he's taking his clothes off. <laughs> so I had I walked over there. This was in Salinas. I walked over to the to was it Salinas? It might have been, um, I don't remember which club. I'm trying to think right now. But I'm walking over to the sauna. The dude's just standing there naked looking at me through the glass door. <laughs> what do you do? He presses his pecker up against yeah. the glass. But what do you do? You just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just eyeballing you. Just yeah. yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what do you do if the guy's just standing there naked? Like, what do I say to him, right? right. So I knocked on the, win- the door because I just like, boom, boom. Like, you uh. can't, I said, you got to leave. Put your clothes on. And he goes, I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, oh. I guess I'm gonna call so cops uncomfortable because I'm not gonna physically remove a naked guy. Probably one of the best ways to defuse a fight, right? It like is. Some dudes about to brawl with you, you just get naked, right? All right, let's yeah. get. Just start taking your pants off. Yeah. Don't try that yeah. in prison. Like, Ooh, the I'm state. getting excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys like ah, it that doesn't work in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to. Rem- I also had to lift someone out of the the jacuzzi. I had to kick someone out of the club, and they were in the jacuzzi. So we had to pull out, try to grab this guy's slippery ass out of the. Terrible. People don't realize when you run a gym. You're, you're going to at least, I don't know, what would you say the average would be? Once a month or once every other month? You have to call? I'd say once a month. Yeah. Once a month, right? Well, yeah. When, although, when your memberships are that cheap, you're going to find all kinds of characters. Not, that's a good point. That's a really good point. It's probably diff- It was probably different for us running a yeah. gym that was 20 I don't think it's months. like that at Equinox. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had some characters we had to deal you with. get some characters. Damn, I remember I had this Asian guy one time that was swimming laps, dude, and I had a complaint, right, about his bathing suit. And I come walking in, and I remember walking in, and all I could see, because he was doing freestyle, right? Like, whoosh, back and forth. All I see are these ass cheeks. <laughs> With the tub of, what was he wearing? Little, 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 little fucking G-string, bro. G-string. He had a thong. Oh, wow. He had a thong on. That's a bold move. It was so great. Dude. It's like, hey, as much I can appreciate the the outfit, bro, but I, I got to get you to put some different shorts on. <laughs> I mean, he was really cool. He got out and left. <laughs> I wonder if but that's I, the same guy. But I think to myself, like, what what were you thinking? Like, it's a super public place. Isn't it like a kind of public place? This is like lots of kids and people coming in and out here. Like, let me just throw my fucking thong yeah. on. Yeah. I had... <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to go up to a lady on cardio because her her thong was I mean her her pants were halfway down her ass. Oh, you see her thong. Yeah. yeah so I had to kind of go up to her and I'm like, what do I see? You know, to her. So I'm like, uh, yeah, your pants are falling yeah. off. Do you ever get the ladies that used to go in the, in, in the pool and then they come over on the treadmill and they walk barefoot, fucking dripping wet from the pool? Oh, what is that? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why? Yeah, they just <laughs> had this like spontaneously awesome idea. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I'm gonna go. Yeah, I want to go walk now. <laughs> yeah. God damn, dude. Nothing beats the poop nah, dry off. Poop. Sometimes, sometimes I miss those, miss those days, man. You yeah. you don't you know what's funny is you get so if you do it long enough you get so used to it that it becomes like it's not a big deal. Oh, it's not. It wasn't a big deal. Like telling stories. I wish I you know what the more I know my, there's more stories. One of my biggest remember. regrets, oh, yeah. and if I, if you're listening right now because I know we have a lot of listeners that uh, own gyms or work in gyms, like start a journal. I wish I would have journaled mm-hmm. half yeah. the stuff because I could have easily wrote a book. On all, I forgot half the shit, dude. Oh, so many. But things. you're right. It's like literally ev- minimum every month. There's a story, oh, you know. God. If not every week, mm. there's something going. I on. I remember our operations manager. She would just get so pissed some days. Like she came out of the women's locker room just fucking ah, like just <laughs> yelling because like some lady had took a shit like on the drain. You know, oh, like, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> like like that hole is for for whatever. But you know? the, but you're so in the some, bathroom. So no, that's a that's a it's thing. A, right? Some culture. Is cultural it, thing. Yeah, yeah, it is a cultural thing where they can shit in the shower. Like, it's a normal thing. So, <laughs> what? I didn't even Google. go all the way through this. Google this. pile of shit. Google this, Doug. What culture, what cultures no shit way. in the shower? Yes, dude, it's a thing. I promise you it's a thing. Just like shitting in the shower. You know, like the, you know how they, you know, there's some cultures that you, because they stand over holes and they shit, that, that well, that's why they stand over the toilets and they shit and they shit all over the Which toilet. Which location yeah. was this, Justin? Yeah, this was a San Teresa. Yeah. Really? Yeah, dude. It, it, this happened a couple times. It wasn't just like a random crazy thing. Well, so I've seen shit in the shower too but I didn't think it was a cultural thing I thought <laughs> Doug, just some no Doug, uh, somebody uh, got like Doug's face found a hole and then it's like <laughs> oh. yeah I feel like some people are just weird you know what I mean yeah it, so here's something that I <laughs> this is funny I used to train my salespeople all the time on how to sell you know programs or sell supplements or you know you could always turn a conversation to whatever and one time this lady went down because she passed out which by the way it sounds bad but people would pass out I don't know once a week 
Yeah. Once a week, somebody would. You always have to watch out. Yeah. yeah. So this lady kind of, oh my god, I'm faint. She's on the floor, and everybody's coming to her, and you know we have to call an ambulance because that's normal. And she's yeah. she's awake, but she's kind of faint or whatever. So my sales guy <laughs> made a joke, and he's like, "Yeah, what, what can you sell that lady over there? Over there?" So all right, so I walk over there and then sold her some protein bars <laughs> to help her with her blood sugar levels, so she doesn't she doesn't <laughs> so pass. That's like the worst. Dude. Such a dick. Oh, it's the worst. But give it to every her. time we call an ambulance, though, the ambulance would park in front of the club, and you'd see the siren lights throughout the whole gym because it would go through the, the glass. And I'd always make an emergency sale on my announcement. Attention members of guests, we have an emergency sale, 15% off all apparel. And we'd sell more apparel every single time. Oh, my God, dude. I know. Awful. Shameless. I know. Terrible. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just read this another study. So check this out. This was on. Now, I, I want to debate this study a little bit, or I want to discuss this study with you a little bit. But this study comes out, and it links meal times to cancer. What? Yeah, so the study says that mm -hmm, this study says that people who eat uh, late at night or people who eat after I think they said something like 8 p.m. have a higher rate or higher instances of cancer. Now, there's been other studies that have also shown this, and what they're trying to do in the article is they're speculating why that may be the case. Maybe evolutionarily speaking, we probably didn't eat when the sun went down. Because we don't want to attract predators with our food or whatever, so maybe our bodies, you know, they don't, they do better when we eat in a, in a short time period. Maybe during the day, we've read other studies that say eating late at night, you know, maybe contribute to insulin, you know, well, they, are they kind of lumping in um, people that work the graveyard shift too, you know, and like that type of a lifestyle. That's a very, very good uh, question. Very good point. I think they did control for that. Hmm. Um, but here's the other thing that I've always I've always had a problem with. People that tend to eat late at night, like 11 o'clock at night, that usually is an additional meal to what they've, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not like it's not like they ate. Like they were good. They could have gone to bed, but then yeah. this became another. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's the same. Like I don't think people who eat at midnight or 10 o'clock are eating the same food as other people. I think if you took all those people and put them in a category and then really examine what they were doing, I feel like it's, I feel like it's an extra hmm. an extra meal and the decisions that people tend yeah, to make. Yeah, that you make at eleven o'clock at night is ice cream, cereal, oh, yeah. cookies. Like, right, you, right. No one's getting up and cooking a chicken breast and fucking spinach right. at eleven o'clock right. at night. <laughs> you know so, so that's the, that's it's one cravings. side of the argument that I'm thinking. Like, okay, well, I want to look at that because uh, food studies are so hard because they're always surveys, right? It's so hard to control for everything. But then the other side of it is this, is that, you know, the body definitely has a circadian rhythm. So do our organs. Hmm. So like when you eat food, uh, I think we had, I don't remember who we had on as a guest, but they were talking about how you could work with jet lag by waiting to feed yourself because your stomach and your digestive system and all that stuff has a circadian rhythm. And if you time it right, it'll help your body adjust to the new time zone. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if throwing that off with food is similar to throwing it off by you know having crazy sleep schedules which we do know increases inflammation and cancer mm. you know what i'm saying yeah that's a, it sounds like a, one of those clickbaity shock and yeah, awe type things what did you, how did you come trying across? to correlate you know that, that seems to me like it's 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 a bit of a stretch yeah i don't know man it's it's it is interesting in the big scheme of things though i mean how important is that compared to oh yeah everything you know, else right overall diet and stuff like that I don't know. I feel. I don't know about you guys, but I. Do you guys feel better eating in the day and not eating at night, or the other way around? Mm, I actually feel better more towards like later in the afternoon and night, like eating then versus mm -hmm. during the day. I don't really feel great when I eat during the day. So I'm, I'm I've, told, that's I've, how my body is. Though I've mm -hmm. told you guys before that this is something that I I manipulate. Like they'll, so sometimes oh, right. you eat in the day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, have you noticed differences between the two, or is it just because it's different? Well, I think it it takes more self control and discipline for me to not eat later in the evening since I've trained myself to do that for most of my life. Okay. So for a majority of my life, I was a late eater. I'd, I'd eat all the way till ten, eleven o'clock at night. Didn't matter. I'd eat whatever. Because again, I was always the kid who was trying to gain. Right. So I mm -hmm. never. I would never like. I would never not eat something at night if I was hungry. Right. So I ate all the way up until midnight till I went to bed for most of my life. Mm -hmm. Now as I've gotten older and. You know, it's it's much easier for me to gain weight than it was before. Now I actually play with that. So I'll restrict from the evening and play with my times. Mm. And, you know, it's it's challenging for me to do that. But I also feel like I lean out when I do that. 
And then I'll, I'll so like right now. So this, every time you change it, you find that you. Yeah, I feel like, and I, I feel like it's that it's part of that, my body getting adapted to that, that it's working more or working harder. I don't know if that's the right way to explain it or not, but that's how I feel. And I always seem to lean out when I do that. So it seems like, yeah, it seems like it shakes things up. And so I, I will do it for a few weeks and then I'll switch back the other direction. Now during this, this contest thing that we're doing, have you, are you scheduling changes like that? Are, are, what, so are you la- going- last night was the first night that I did something like this. Okay. Right. So like I, my last meal, I think was at six 30, which is, you know, normally I'll eat again by eight or eight or nine. So now you eat this morning or you're going to eat early. I did today. eat this morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. I ate first thing. So I got up early this morning and, and so I ate at like seven o'clock this morning. Mm-hmm. So, which is early for me. So normally I will come here first and then have my first meal either right before here or after we podcast first. So that was different because I, I changed it from last night. So mm-hmm. I'll do things like that. Just And sometimes I won't schedule it or plan it. I'll just allow it to happen. I'll be like, oh, this will be, good. I've got well, I've got what I need in. Like, and that's kind of how I decided last night. It wasn't like this planned thing mm-hmm. like, oh, tonight I'm going to cut off at 630. It's like, oh, I've hit my, my major macro targets that I need and mm-hmm. I'm a little, I want Are you tracking? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm tracking now. Fat secret? Yeah. So this is, so my, I guess I should share what I'm, what I'm doing. This is, what's kind of cool. I love that we're everyone's doing different stuff, you know, and this is what, what makes me really appreciate what we've created here at mind pump is that, you know, none of us, I think are dogmatic about anything that, that we do and that we encourage people figure mm-hmm. out what's best for their body. And here we are in a six week competition to, you know, lean out, build muscle, whatever. And, and as much as we all agree on everything, we're still all have different strategies to what works for us. And so th- this first week for me, <clears throat> uh, I think I I think I told you guys off air. I don't think I talked about this on the air. So the kind of six week strategy for me is a two week cut, two week bulk, two week cut. Right. Um, but really, this fur we- first fur we this first week mm-hmm. isn't really a cut as much as it is you know cleaning my food up really well, dialing it, dialing everything in, tracking everything. So I'm kind of hovering right around three thousand calories. And I don't know necessarily if that's technically a cut for me or not. I won't really know that till after this week. And so mm-hmm. right now, I'm, and how are you gonna how are you gonna judge that by weight loss or the by the scale? So I I mean I, I'm pretty good at being able to look at myself. I I use all these all of them right. right so right, I, right. I every morning and every night I, I weigh myself. Um, I take a look at myself in the mirror and I can I can see. The, in fact, funny. Uh, Last night, Katrina was making fun. So now that I'm not competing, right, then it's no longer my job to like pose in front of a mirror. Like I think that's fucking. It's the the um, the gloves are off for Katrina. So she's just fucking jabbing at me last oh, night. Oh, every time you look in the yeah. mirror. And well, yeah, because the and <laughs> so the, I mean, when I'm getting ready for a show, that's like part of my routine. It's sure. just at the end of the night after I'm done feeding all night long, I jump on the scale. I see where my last kind of weigh in is before I go to bed. I hit a couple of poses in front of the mirror. <laughs> I kind of like evaluate my body and then I go to bed. Right. Yeah. And so last night was kind of like the first night that I had done that since we've been, been doing things. And she was making fun of me. She's like, do you have to walk up to the mirror with your arms like that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see it. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I'll do it for you guys. Cause I'm a sport like that. Yeah. And so, no, what I, I mean, as soon as like I, wing I your as soon as, no, as soon as I get naked, you do the you know, hand thing. Yeah. I, I kind of like retract my shoulders. I get into my position to like, if I was posing on stage and she's <laughs> like, do you, do you have to walk up to the, she's like, what happens if you put your hands down <laughs> when you walk up to the mirror? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, why are you being a hater? I, mean, <laughs> I would she never hated before. Bro, I would pay five thousand dollars to see Justin do that. Yeah, <laughs> to see Justin do you that. You know what? We should do a video of you teaching me. Oh god, I think that'd be great. Oh god. And also, I, I, I yeah, I've been stealing your. <laughs> Sal has this like technique with his face. Like he does this thing where he what? Like, bites the inside of his cheek, and so it looks leaner. You know what I mean? Have you noticed that? <laughs> do I really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. You go, I guess. I'm gonna try that. I didn't know that works. Did you bite, bite the inside of my cheek? Yeah, and so I've never like, done like that before. yes, you have. Don't lie, what? dude. I watch you. What are you talking about? I'm this guy that's here observing. Yeah. You guys think I don't see shit? <laughs> I see it. I don't need to make my face look leaner. Oh yes, you do. You my know. face gets too dude, lean, baby. And, and then it's like, like he's just blue naturally gaunt like that. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> I, I wish we could do a fat transfer. I need some of your cheeks yeah. out. Of <laughs> I'm gonna try this strategy though. I mean, that's man. that's my I'm that's telling you. dude. That's the detriment for me when I get really lean because I don't store a lot of fat on my face you look at my face yeah. you're like god damn bro eat some food see that's what's <laughs> great my I, face gets too much i feel like that's right yeah. when you, you finally get to see my jawline when i'm four percent body are you, uh, are you 
going to shave the beard? For sure I will. Yeah. When that's I, my gut. Yeah. yeah. When, once I get Halloween, go. I'll shave the beard so I, you can see how- I tell you what, though. That's that, that test that we did, that body fat test that we did, as long as it's consistent, I really don't care. But but I definitely think the measurements were of course high, it was high. It was all over of the course place. it was high. Who gives a shit though? Of course, I it think was... it was a good three, probably two to three yeah. percent high. Is my my yeah. guess right uh, around well, there? Well, it's known to be off two to four. Mm. So I anticipated it to be. That so high. I have calipers at home. You know, we could use calipers no, too. The problem with calipers cal- is that someone else will be testing yeah, you. Yeah, no good. No calipers. Uh, I'll me. test you guys. Cal- yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, damn, Justin went up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, caliper testing, no yeah, good for a test you. like this. Like, I don't like, like you said, it doesn't matter. As long as it's consistent. Right. I don't give a shit if it read me at 25. You know what I'm saying? What I will care about is what it reads when I go back there in two weeks and three yeah. weeks and four, whatever. Did you, know? you did you guys see uh, Enzo's uh, vlog? vlog? It was good. Yeah. So. Bro, they have fucking they have a blast in here when we're gone. That's funny. Yeah. Did you see the video? Yeah. They're all working out with their shirts off. Yeah. Music blasting <laughs> in our gym. I know. I was gonna get on them about that. Like yeah, clean up your sweat. You know, I don't yeah. wanna I don't want that on You know our what would bench. be a you know what would be a cool thing at the end of this? It might be fun to do a uh just a, a group workout. Like the three of us take everybody through a crazy workout. We I think it'd be do, super fun. We should go do it in a public gym. Yeah. Too many people. I agree with that. That'd be a lot of people, though. We'd have to go dead time and, and yeah, have a schedule. Yeah, we'd go in the middle of the day sometime. Maybe. Middle of the day. Any of these gyms are pretty. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like our place is too small for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody in here. What am I going to do? I'll just, yeah. Uh, like, somebody's left out. They're going to have to. I'll just grab Mace. Ball. I'm going to need I'll more be BPC157 for that shit, because I know what will happen if the three of us work out and we're working out with everybody else. Oh, yeah, dude, we you, only have one squat rack It's going to be like, platform. who could lift the most yeah. on everything? Yeah. yeah. Hey, how did you start that? I did. So I did yesterday. I did uh, a tiny amount, and it was, I guess, was too little, according to you. And then I read on, uh, you know, there's a blog by Ben Greenfield on the on the subject. By the way, I don't recommend anybody use BPC-157. It's a research chemical. It's still uh, being studied. I don't recommend it whatsoever. Actually, Enzo came in the other day. He's like, should I use it? I'm like, no, dude. I'm not going to fucking tell you to use <laughs> any of this stuff. <laughs> Crazy. So, but I did use it. You're fucking twelve, bro. Yeah. You don't need to. And I'm, <laughs> it, I'm pretty sensitive to how I feel about certain things. Now, here's the deal. I did a lot of re. Did you do a lot of research on it to see what no, other? No, no, I did. <laughs> no, I mean, he I just did. It <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I trust, I trust Ben, dude. I read, a, I read all of Ben's article. Ben's you know? done everything to himself. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you should trust him. That's no. Well, I was already. So it had already been recommended to me by. Ben Pakolsky by um, hey, hey, pro F- IFBB bodybuilder. Right, right. So, yeah, but I, I, I again, I also, I also trust Ben. Ben's, yeah. Ben's a smart guy. Does his homework. Does his research. Like he's, <clears throat> he's a, on the holistic path right now. Like I read Ben Green, Ben Greenfields. I also Jordan Shallow. So you know all people that I trust. So I've read, so I've read some more stuff on this, and there was some. It may affect the dopamine and serotonin uh, uh, systems in the body. Um, and they think that may be one of the reasons why it helps the gut. But uh, some studies show that it dramatically increases tolerance for amphetamines in mice. Um, and I think it may even help with opiate uh, withdrawal. Nonetheless, there are more effects than just the ones that you know we've been talking about, which is help your body heal and repair and this and that. So I don't know yet, but I'm very sensitive to certain things, right? And I've only done it twice. And I felt... A little irritable afterwards. Like I feel a little bit edgy mm. afterwards. Do you mm. notice anything like that? Not at all. I, I, so far, I've felt. You don't notice anything like, right that's after. My, that's my like constant state of mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no. It's norm. It's, I, it's it's been nothing but positive things for me. Like it, besides the pain relief or whatever <clears throat> and the healing. Do you notice any changes no, in feelings? No. I, nothing negatively for sure. Okay. If anything, I feel positive. Like okay. it's. But I, I think part of the. I think that's just a feedback loop of me feeling better. Therefore, then I feel, feel good. Then I feel positive, right? And so you, I don't. I don't think it's giving me energy. I don't think I feel stronger. You're I don't doing think, it every other day i actually haven't done it now since we've started the the six week thing okay. so i wanted to make sure you know when after i whip the shit out of everybody that i can uh-huh. say i didn't take anything mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i don't want to i don't want to hear anybody mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. actually okay right now it's actually good. it's it's and that for me this is what sold me on this is you know it's what of my eight months or whatever that i've been dealing with this and i told you guys that not a week had gone by where I hadn't had a day or two where it just felt like someone is sticking a blade in my Achilles. I mean, just mm. fucking painful enough to make me limp the next mm. day and just want to be off my feet. 
where since I've taken the the cycle that I've only done, I've only finished one one, one jar, one little bottle. Yeah, one little bottle, and it's five milligrams. I, I feel significantly better than what I did. Interesting. Before. Yeah, I don't feel a hundred percent, but I do feel significantly better. I have not had a day since then mm. where it has felt like that. And while I'm also in the middle of increasing my neat, so before I kind of had like this threshold of. As long as I was doing below 10,000 steps, it really didn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had a day or two back to back of uh, above 10,000 steps, that's when I would feel that kind of like mm-hmm. someone stabbing me. Mm-hmm. And I'm averaging 10 to 14,000 mm-hmm. 10 to 14,000 steps uh, a day now. So, and I haven't had any issues. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and and I just did my first. So, uh, any changes to <laughs> nail your nail skin, anything like that? No, I haven't noticed anything. Okay. Yeah, I haven't noticed anything like, like faster nail growth. No, like like with HGH. Like yeah, I'm just trying to when connect. I, when to I see. when I was that was a very obvious thing for me when I was taking HGH. Like Wolverine's like, oh yeah. no, I was clipping my nails every like three days. Oh wow, yeah, okay. that was crazy. So that was HGH though. I mm. don't feel that. So I've felt all those things before and taken plenty of things. This no, this is feel... this is a lot of fun because we all have uh, we all have our our things that give us advantages and things that give us disadvantages and we're all doing things a little differently and look at the end of the day i uh, you know i I do want to say i feel very grateful for being able to do something like this with guys like you guys um you know uh self-aware uh disciplined individuals we get to see each other every day talk about these things um there's no malintent it's a it's a lot of fun and really at the end of the day and i want to be totally transparent the reason why we're doing this is we've talked about this many times and that one of the ways you get people, your audience excited about working out and eating right and following programs, this and that and the other, is you do a contest. And it's just, this is just old marketing, old advertising, you know, 12-week challenge, five-week challenge, you know, yeah. sign up for whatever. And we knew that. We don't want to do that necessarily with our audience and say, hey, sign up for this challenge and pay 50 bucks and whatever. Mm-hmm. But we did say, hey, look, if we did something for ourselves... Other people would probably want to jump on. It would be a lot of fun, a lot of good energy. We could make fun of each other, which we do anyway. We might as well do it in a constructive way. Um, and it is, you know, like I said, we have our own. I mean, Adam's coming, just getting his hormones to come back. Justin is doing an elimination diet, which is going to make it hard for him to progress <laughs> necessarily aesthetically, but his health is his priority. Yeah. And I've just been consistent. So for me, I'm not getting into this decondition. I'm already being consistent. So. The changes may be hard for there. So we have our disadvantage. We have our advantages. At well, the end of the day, though, everybody- According to your body fat percentage, you're not that much different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. You take a group of people who haven't worked out, and you take a group of people working out for five years, you train them for six weeks, who's going to make the greater change? Yeah, the yeah. yeah I, so. I, I, think it's, I think it's important, too, though, that people- I, I mean, my body's gone to shit mainly because of the hormone, my hormonal changes, but I haven't stopped training. I mean- your I'm, training's changed. Well, yeah, the volume significantly. Is, my volume has increased yeah. significantly. Yeah, Back, I mean, I've, when I was when I was going through the hormonal thing, it was all about my health. It was like right. it, I couldn't come in and hammer my body. No, I could tell the biggest difference in your workouts. I could tell that you were feeling better by your workouts because your workouts before were rehab. Yeah. Your workouts now are, or I'm training again. Yeah, yeah, I'm training yeah. again, and I'm, I'm not even at my stride. I mean, I was joking, but I'm half serious about like. You know, I haven't even hit the fucking rock music yet, dude. Like Man. once the rock music comes, that's another level for me. Mm. Like I and it's it's funny, but this is a thing I do. Like I really do this when I was getting ready for shows is and it, it's and it works really well for me and it's it keeps me in the right mindset. Like right now, I'm not supposed to be fucking hammering hard yet. I'm not ready for that mm. yet. Like it's and I need to progressively slowly get there as as I start to increase volume over the next six weeks and so i even change like the the tempo i'm training i change the music that i'm listening to and it kind of keeps me it's all a mindset yeah it's also why i don't like working out with other people because that all gets thrown off i get i pick up your energy you know i'm saying if i'm working out with all these youngsters or you guys whatever your energy is i might i'll bring myself (laughs) up to that Whereas if I'm by myself, I'm I know what I need to do. I know what I need to work on today. I know at what level I need, what intensity level I need to bring today, and I want to bring it right to that. Nothing more, nothing less. The perfect amount. Yeah. Today's quad is brought to you by Maps Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength. 
Matt's Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking claw. The eagle has landed. First question is from Chris Henry 101. What is the best way to fix muscle imbalances? Good question. Find them first. Yeah, yeah. So when you have so a muscle imbalance really is it's a term to describe a recruitment pattern or the way your body moves. Let's just let's just let's make it as uh, easy to understand as possible. Because I think sometimes when we talk about recruitment patterns and imbalances, people get a little bit confused, right? Because it can yeah. sound a little too technical. Really, it's just uh, an imbalance is your body is moving in a way that's not optimal for long-term joint health and mobility. That's all. So your shoulder can move a lot of different ways, for example. And one way, or maybe a variety of ways, are ideal in the sense that <clears throat> moving in these particular ideal ways reduces wear and tear on the joint. You know, you have the best range of motion, the best control, and the lowest risk for energy. Uh, excuse me, injury. So that would be considered... Uh, a an ideal muscle uh, recruitment pattern or ideal movement. Now, things outside of that are less than ideal, and it can get worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where you can move so poorly that you can hurt yourself the first time, mm. or you can work you can move just bad enough to where you just start to develop chronic pain. And this is the, the, one of the most common forms of pain where clients would come to me and be like, you know, my shoulder has been bothering me for the last few years. I'm like, well, what did you do to it? I don't know. It just kind of bothers me in the morning. So it's like one of those. Like they don't even know what they did to it. It's just moving in a way that's not ideal. Now, the best way to fix it, you have to identify what the, the ways that it's moving in the wrong way. And then you have to send a signal that overrides that by moving it the right way more often than you move it the wrong way. That's, a, that's something people need to understand. So what I mean by that is if I notice that your shoulders are really far forward and that's why you're, that's one of the main reasons why your shoulders are hurting – if you just train with me once a week and I focus on bringing your shoulders back, it'll help a little bit because I'm strengthening the opposing you know, movement or whatever. But really to change a muscle imbalance or, or recruitment pattern, I have to, I have to move you in a, you have to be able to move properly more often than you well, move improperly. It can't just stop at the workout. You need to address that all day long. That has to be something that you are conscious of. Um, you know, as you, as you do any movement, as you lift things, as you grab things, like you just have to be more conscious of how to adjust and, um, you know, real time, you know, pull your shoulders back and, and understand, you know, what retracted position in depressed position feels like. And so you can always come back to that, um, sort of homeostasis where we want to be in good alignment. We want to be in good postural position. So just understanding, you know, where to start is is the most important thing and then now you know the movements that require like understanding like what's the most preferential way to lift things and you know which which mechanics are going to do you know the best there like i think it's it's definitely an educational process because i think people people kind of go through lifts uh mindless sometimes and so that you know and this develops mm -hmm. a specific type of a pattern where i'm i'm in a shortened position you know in my elbow where you know now i'm i'm heavily relying on you know my biceps to do a lot of lifting with this whereas i don't need that i don't need that that's not preferential but that's the way i've always done it and now it just compiles and this becomes something that it becomes your default becomes a pattern. problem well the, bo the bottom line is that we all have muscle imbalances. Yeah. Everybody has a, a has a muscle. Nobody fucking walks around in the anatomical position all the fucking time and is balanced is perfectly balanced the way. So uh, that's the first. So don't freak out when cuz this is also like a scare tactic term that a lot of trainers will use on clients. Fuck, I used to do it all the time. I mean, there's you know, it's very easy for me to watch the way somebody walks or have them squat and just fucking pick them apart on all the things that aren't firing properly, like when they move. So it's it's not something you need to freak out about, but what I tell clients is like, let's let's address the ones that are the most debilitating, right? Let me find, the, let's, let's look at the areas that are potentially causing pain. So most mm -hmm. chronic pain is a result of some sort of a muscle imbalance. So if you've got 
knee, you didn't have knee surgery, but you have knee pain out of nowhere, or you have low back pain, or you have shoulder pain, or you have neck pain. Like if you have chronic pain that you've had for some time, it's because of a muscle imbalance that you've you've got to address. And this was really the motivation behind Prime Prime and Prime Pro is we knew that every single client, no matter if they were some super athlete or just someone trying to get lean or someone trying to build muscle, that the real pursuit started with, okay, let's figure out how poorly these people move and let's address the big areas that we can improve upon that and incorporate that within the routine. So that was really the motivation behind Prime. So in there is a zone test where, and and it's very, we try to make it as basic as possible so the average person could come in and learn. There's, there's three movements in there that we think are extremely important. You know, you have a wall a, a wall test where you're raising above your head because obviously in your life you're going to grab things from a cupboard and lift things above your head and that puts you in a very compromising position if you lose that mobility and that range of motion. So we have that, we have the squat, and then we have a rotational uh, test in there. And all three of these things are probably the, the biggest areas that you need to address first because we could sit here and nitpick every single imbalance yeah. that, uh, on, a, on a body, but first address the ones that are probably causing chronic pain. First figure those out, and that's what Prime was for. So mm-hmm. if you don't have Prime and you're asking this question, that's got to be an investment for you. Yeah. And the reason why we're recommending Prime is mainly because, I mean, we're talking generally about imbalances, but it, it's very individual. Mm-hmm. The way that I would correct an imbalance on one person can be very different from the next person, even though they may have the same. Right, that's symptoms. why you can't just. That's why you just yeah. can't answer this. Yeah, like yeah. they could both have shoulder. Yeah, you pain. can't. You can't just say like, oh, exactly, right? Two people right. with shoulder pain could have two different things Issues. that they yeah that they should be working mm-hmm. on or addressing. So, hence again, the the yeah. whole idea. And a lot of times, it's just a matter of like you haven't expressed those types of movements, and so your body's been sort of prioritizing a different way to do it, which hasn't been benefiting you quite as much and so we're just trying to expose that and like show you like where how to like align your body mm-hmm. so that way now um you know we, we may be able to alleviate some of these pains and some of these one imbalances of, one of my biggest regrets uh since we've started mind pump was not was not documenting my process better because i think um, oh, dramatic change. I don't, I don't think people realize how immobile I was and how many issues I had mechanically uh, that I addressed over the last two and a half years or so. And nor do I think they really understand how much work and effort went into that. That wasn't like a, oh, let me follow some of these prime exercises and just do them a couple times before I work out or whatever. Dude, you, walked, you, you worked on your squat for a year. Yeah. Well, it was every day. That's yeah, what I'm trying yeah, to say here. Yeah. Is when every you, day, multiple times a day. That's what I see. When I recommend correctional exercises to clients, it, it's it's not this is what you do. You know, two or three days a week. It's here's your five to ten minute correctional exercise routine that you do two to three times every day. Yes. Because that's the only way to really because you got to understand what it, what a default pattern is. Okay. Let me let me explain what that is. When you get up to walk, the way you walk is your default pattern of how you walk. Nobody walks and thinks of how they're walking. If you do, that's that's a lot of anxiety, right? Yeah. You literally are up and you're just walking and moving. You don't think to yourself like right step, you know, right foot forward, left foot. No, you just do yeah. your walk. That's your default pattern. Now imagine if I told you you had to change the way you walked. Well, it would take a lot of practice and it would take a lot of practice frequently to the point where it becomes your new default to where you could get up and then walk without thinking right. and now you have a different way it of walking. It enters your subconscious. That's it. It becomes your well, it becomes I, your pattern. I mean, just ye- yesterday, I'm like I'm thinking back to yesterday just, just to give people examples of, you know, yesterday I, I, I trained legs. So, of course, I did my 15 to 20 minutes of priming before. When I first wake up in the morning, a lot of times I'll get down and kind of say good morning to my dogs. I automatically hop down into a full baby position type squat and I sit in that position, retract my shoulders a few times and squeeze, puff my chest up, sit upright in that position. I then rock to my left. I rock to my right. I sit there and do kind of a combat stretch from the baby position and I spend about five to eight minutes in that position when I first wake up. Then I do that when I'm training. Then I come home later on the day and and so I find all these little ways throughout my day to to get into the the proper posture that I need to be in and get comfortable in this position that used to be uncomfortable or unobtainable for me mm-hmm. just a couple of years ago. And it's still to the, today. And, and so the only difference now, like it was like painful, 
you know, work and like trying to train myself to keep doing it. Now that I've got the mobility, now I just got to get myself, can continue to get back down in that position all the time. So I've, I'll sit, we'll be watching TV. We do this all the time. We're podcasting. Some people don't know this, but sometimes, you know, we'll, one of us will rock down because these mics have adjustable swings on them and I'll sit down in a squatted position and you don't even know it mm-hmm. while we're on the, on the uh, show and I'm sitting down in a baby position and I'm just kind of working, working my ankle mobility, working my hip mobility. So it's, and, and I get this question a lot, like, you know, how many times do you do this or what's, it's like you do it all as, the time, all the time. Yeah. yeah. You can't do it enough. It's a bad, you have a bad pattern right now. We needed to correct it. Like Sal was saying, it's like, you're trying to, like, you. I get hairdressers. I used to yeah. train a lot, right? And they, they got this really bad forward shoulder. Well, fuck, man. They six hours a day. They're cutting That's hair. That's the position and, they're in. Yeah, they're yeah. in that position. So I'm trying to counter that. Well, I'm if I'm going to try and counter it, one, I want to I want to be spending either as much time or building as much load the opposite yeah, side. So you're going to build a lot of strength and a lot of muscle going the opposite direction, but you still have to change the pattern, which requires lots and lots of frequency. Right. Yeah. Lots and lots of practice. Lower intensity. So here's the thing, too. When you're building muscle and strength, it's higher intensity. When you're changing a pattern, it's frequency with low intensity. Right. I'm not trying to... Yeah, I have no... Ba- I should I guess it's a good, good point, Sal, because yeah. I'm, I'm not... When I'm yeah. making this... I'm just my body. I'm just moving my shoulders yeah, back. You're not trying to hammer yourself. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even using bands half the time. Half the time, I'm just doing my own body weight. I'm just training myself to pull the shoulder blades back and to sit down in that position. You don't even need to no. really stress it. No. Now, Ad, uh, Justin made a point uh, earlier about how when people go and they just work out and don't really pay attention to technique and whatnot, you know, this happened a while ago. It used to be different. A long time ago, when you would go to a gymnasium, because that's, that's where the word gym comes from. They were called gymnasiums. The, I, the concept of working out didn't exist. What you were doing is you were practicing skills. It mm-hmm. wasn't The goal wasn't to go and get sore and sweat. They didn't understand you're burning calories. They didn't understand you got to sweat and you know all that stuff. What they, or at least they didn't make that the, the, the primary goal. The goal was you're going to go and you're going to practice you know, your handstands. Or you're going to practice your deep knee bends, what they used to call them, or you're going to practice the rings or whatever. Vertical climbing. It was all about skills. Today, the way we understand exercise today is all fucked up. It's all wrong. The idea now is not to go to the gym and, and learn skills and perfect skills. It's to go to the gym and get sore and sweat. And so right. skill Burn calories, skill and technique don't even matter anymore. I, you, you see this most prevalent in running. Running is the best example of what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. where People, everyday people, do right. this every year. Right, just where they, fucking run to run their bike. Yeah, they get of, a, like trying to become a better runner. Yeah, they're like, I'm going to lose <laughs> weight. Oh, I know what to do. I'm going to start running, and then mm-hmm. they just go and run. And these are people who never run, and so they just run terribly, and they have bad and, biomechanics. And they're carrying an extra twenty to thirty pounds on them, which means they've totally changed the way they walk right. or run from the thirty pounds before that. So that's right. This is why and I'm so yeah. glad you went that direction, Sal, because. We do get a lot of flack because we we talk so much down about cardio and running. And this is why right here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the reason why. Not because it can't be great. Not because it's not good for some people mentally. It's not about that. It's that majority of people that choose to go out and run to lose body fat have no business doing that. No, they never oh. run. They never run. Now they're going to go run to work yeah, out. And they're compiling on these imbalances and they're, they, you know, eventually they're going to run into a wall where it's either, you know, it's pain or it's like injury or, you All know, that. something's going to, yeah, like wear and tear on, on the ligaments and the joints. So, well, my, my point is they get up to go run and the goal isn't, okay, you know, I want to lose weight. I, I want to use running to lose weight. So I'm going to go outside and I'm going to I'm gonna hire a coach or I'm going to watch videos and I'm going to perfect how I run. That's not the goal. The goal is I'm going to go run until I get really tired. Yeah. So there's no emphasis on skill or technique. And if there is an emphasis on it, it's like second or third. First is I got to sweat and I got to start, you know, it. breathe Just hard. sweat. Right. And so people are treating the gym that way. Now, in the in early, in early in Mind Pump you know, days, we used to hammer on CrossFit for this, although they've made more of an effort now to perfect technique. But early in the early CrossFit days, you see a lot of gyms where they'd just, here, here's a snatch, here's a clean, here's a, you know, a, 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 a squat. Mm-hmm. Do them for, for time and do them for fatigue. They were treating it the same way people would treat running, where it's, you know, the goal isn't the skill and the technique. The goal is I got to get sore, I got to sweat, and I got to get tired. No. When you go to the gym, especially if you're new to intermediate, this is an, another reason why I don't recommend people hammer themselves with super high intensity. Besides the fact that it doesn't really give you better or faster results for most people, 
Besides all that, for the most part, if you are not experienced and you push yourself to fatigue, the first thing to go is a good technique. Yeah. See you later, skill. Yeah, your, your technique is out because your body is just trying to do what you're telling it by all means necessary. You don't have good technique to begin with. So in order for you to have good technique, you have yeah. to be fresh. So now you're making yourself super tired. Your goal should be to go to the gym, perfect the skills, perfect the techniques. Once those skills and techniques become hardwired. Right. That's the loudest signal now. Yeah, now you can push yourself to get sore and to sweat mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now you're going to fatigue and your form is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And so that was a very good point you made, Justin, because that's what we see a lot now today. When people go to the, I don't know anybody that most people don't go to the gym and think, you know, oh, I'm new. I want to sign up. But what are your goals? I want to learn how to really do a good squat. I want to perfect mm -hmm. the bent. No, no, no. They say, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to sweat. The only time I see that is if it's somebody who's interested in competing in like powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Right. That is the only time. And I wish more people would train that right. way. I, right. I, I, let, yesterday I was squatting next to this old man that was, you you could tell was either competed in the old back in the days or was competing now. It is, And he was squatting like, oh, I don't know. He worked his way up to almost 400 pounds. But I, I just watched the way he was training. I actually walked over to him and complimented his squat because it's just rare that I see someone yeah. just to to work out that way. Yeah. To just the the way he was addressing his mechanics versus just trying to get through the workout and push through. You could see this guy mm -hmm. really cared about his technique, gave himself good rest periods. He was paying attention to his form. Like it's just it's you don't, so funny, you, dude. It's yeah. rare to see. It's so rare to see it that I I feel compelled to walk over and and but, compliment. Hey, man, someone. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice yeah. work, dude. I, I show what you're doing. I tell you what. I bet you if people prioritize technique and skill and they went to the gym and treated it as such, I bet you that alone will help people modulate their intensity properly. Mm -hmm. That alone. You know what I'm saying? Like cuz one of the biggest problems with beginners is you're working out too hard, you're not working out enough, or you know but I think if people went and perfected their skill, that would kind of control it a little bit, right? Oh, intuitively, even if you get into a rest period, you're just going to know, like, based off of, like, oh, wow, I can't maintain this position. I got to rest. I got to rest. Yeah. And it's it, it, that way we're not, like, prescribing, like, a minute or, you know, forever to right, rest. Right. It's like... That's totally arbitrary, right? Yeah, <laughs> no. who gives a shit? It's just, like, you you lost form, you lost technique, you can't maintain, you know, your, your posture positioning, mm -hmm. so stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Next up is Zach X Edge. What are your feelings on using some hyper palatable unhealthy foods in combination with a well-rounded whole food diet as a tool for overriding appetite when the goal is gaining weight and adding mm. muscle? Ooh, I like this question. It's a good one, right? Um, I've been there. I know what this is like to try to push your body to gain muscle and gain weight and your appetite is just, it's just fighting you. Uh. You don't want to eat anymore. And so the, one of the tricks you do is you pick foods that are hyper palatable, which is just a fancy term for really fucking tasty. Something really salty or something kind of sweet. Yeah, to get yourself to eat more. Now, here's the deal. I don't have a problem with this. As long as you're not, you don't have like major dysfunction, you don't have horrible body image issues because you should probably address that first. But here's the deal. Exercise uh, and eating, I think the overarching theme should be good health, but then a little bit outside of that is, look, I like to push my body for maximum performance, or I like to get super shredded for the summer, or I like to you know, build as much muscle as possible within this period of time. When you're pushing your body to those extremes, you're going to have to figure out ways to override certain things. You're going to be working out harder than is ideal for proper health, or you're going to be eating more or less than is ideal for you know proper health or for, for overall good health. And so I don't necessarily have a problem with this, but I do think that there's a way you could do this that's healthier than others. Because the way I would do it when I was a kid is I would reach for literal garbage food, right. like literal, like <laughs> ice cream, yeah. candy bars, like any way I could get calories. Big Macs or whatever. Yeah, yeah, any way I could get calories, I would. And I would be like, oh, this is cool because I got all these extra calories. I'm gaining weight. Really, I would just gain extra body fat from that or water weight. There's healthier ways to do this. I think uh, you can make healthy foods more palatable. Like, you know, if you want to add carbs, you know, white rice, first of all, typically it's considered a hyper palatable food. For most people, I could eat a lot of it, but you could try adding butter to it. You could try adding soy sauce to it. You could try adding salt and butter to potatoes. You could try seasoning meats. Uh, you could try adding, you know, if you don't have a dairy intolerance, a great way to add calories is to drink whole milk with a meal instead of 
you know, drinking water with your meal. Those are some tricks that I used to do that, you know, were, were better than the grabbing the candy and shit like that. Yeah. I, I really like this question because there's there's this like uh you know, the the way the spectrum looks like is you have um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to gain, like you're trying to push your body um ten, twenty, thirty pounds beyond where it really kind of wants to comfortably be. Either north or south, I find is just as challenging. Like I've I've pushed myself 20 pounds plus maybe 30 pounds even over where my body wants to be as far as size wise and I've cut as hard as 20 to probably 30 pounds lower than and and both I think are equally challenging mm -hmm. right so when I'm when I'm cutting like crazy it's obviously I feel like I'm dying I'm starving and my body wants to eat all the time all I'm thinking I'm dreaming about food because I'm in such a, a calorie restriction and I'm so low of body fat and so it's it's amazing how we have these natural regulators that the body kind of tells you like, hey, asshole, like this is not a great, healthy place to be there. Now, that being said, you know, to each their own. It's your body. And if you want to push those extreme levels, who the fuck am I to tell you otherwise? And so, but yet at the same time, too, when I push these limits, I'm trying to be as healthy as I can, knowing damn well that I'm not, that if I was just being healthy, I would eat when I was hungry and eat balanced and mm -hmm. train like I'm supposed to, but I'm pushing the limits because I want to, because it is my body and I'll do what the fuck I want with it. So when I do this, like when I'm going, and, and I will do this during this time when we go to a, the two-week bulk, is I'll figure out where my calorie intake is. And let's just say, hypothetically, I find out that like my happy medium is right around 32 to 3,400 calories where my body kind of maintains. So I want to be in about a five to a 700 calorie surplus when I go to the gain side of that. And so I will eat just like I normally do on a diet where I'm leaning down the same types of foods that I'm rotating through and, and choosing from as far as whole natural foods. And then when I get to my target, that's where I'll add like a cheeseburger. That's how I'll, in, I'll enjoy something like that in the diet where it's macro friendly. I'm getting some beneficial things from it. It's also super palatable for me. And I can eat a cheeseburger even after I've had a chick. If I just add chicken thighs, rice and, and spinach an hour and a half before, even if I'm not really that hungry, I can find room for a, a cheese cheeseburger. A cheeseburger. Yeah. And so that's how I use these, you know, hyper palatable foods to help push me into the surplus if needed. Now, if I'm some days I'm fine. I can get it. The goal is always to get it through all whole natural foods, but I also know what it's like to be on a gain, you know, and mm -hmm. trying to gain for a while. And at one point, especially as you start to build muscle, because your that, metabolism speeds yeah, up. Yeah, it just keeps going up. I mean, I, I reached. It's like a, reverse dieting, you know, and you just keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I reached a point when in during com, uh, the competitive uh, year, like it was this last, the last one that I did when I was at the pro level, and I'm walking around at, in, in the high 230s. Fuck, dude, I was eating 5,000 calories. And that's just, it's 5,000 calories day in and day out of fucking white rice and chicken thighs is just impossible. It's just not going to happen without the cheeseburger every once in a while in there or enjoying an ice yeah, you're cream. You're pushing your body to a pretty. Right. I'm, 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 I'm way beyond the, the, the healthy range. This is where I see the main benefit of and probably why small meals became popular with bodybuilders. This is where I see the benefit of that. Like, if I had to do this. Yeah, I had if, to. Yeah, if you're, if you're, you know, I'm imagining this kid right now is probably somebody who's got a fast metabolism, ectomorph, wants to gain weight, finds it difficult to gain weight, finds it difficult to eat enough to gain weight. This is where small meals may may benefit you because if you're trying to eat, you know, three thousand calories a day or four thousand calories a day, and you're eating three meals, you know, that's it. I got twelve hundred calorie meal yeah. each time. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to dinner, you're gonna be like, oh man, I don't want to. I can't eat all this food. So this is where I think eating small meals is makes it easier because you're not stuffing yourself three times a day. That, now here's a strategy that I found that I found to be very successful. Rather than eating balanced three meals a day, I always find it really easy to eat carbs. So I find it like if I'm even if I'm full, I can eat a bowl of white rice, no problem. So something that I would do is if I know that this meal is going to be 1,200 calories, I'll eat the protein, the fats, and the veggies. And then I'll wait an hour and then I'll eat the carbs by themselves. I can always do that, no problem. When I'd stuff it all together in one meal, that's where I'd find like, oh man, this is too oh, much Oh, that's food. interesting. I've yeah. never tried that before. Oh, and, and you know what? Here's another thing, an added benefit that I've learned from this, and you can find this in Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine, is that combining starches with fats, um, they, they typically recommend against it for, digestive, for, for digestion. I found this to be true 
when I eat the white rice now or the for potato protein by itself, synthesis, it's the opposite though, right? That's what they say, but it's, I feel like it's splitting so many hairs, you know? Right, right. No, I, I mean, I think it's a cool. Str- if it and that's another thing because I can right? eat a bowl of rice by itself. Like, no who cares if it works at the end of the day for you? That's like, a, if you mm-hmm. find that strategy works, because for me, that was the hardest thing about getting the five thousand calories was like, good luck getting that in four meals, bro. That's yeah. that's twelve hundred. That's twelve fifty a, a fucking meal. Yeah, you, you, that's yeah. a for for four meals. Yeah, you know, good luck not mm-hmm. spreading that out. And that's what I had to do was that's like eight hundred calories, six meals or something like that. Yeah, each, right? yeah and so that's well, where, where all these protein shakes kind of come in, right? And, and they that, make them super sweet and like, and post. Palatable. So uh, I did this the other day. You know, uh, I had a protein shake the other day right after my workout. And I know that we we don't advocate you doing that right after an intense workout within the first thirty minutes, especially if you have gut issues. But here I have, I'm, I'm behind on calories right after I, I work out. It's really easy for me to pound a liquid drink. Yep. And then by the time I get home, shower, I can now have a big meal that's eight 900 calories and I'm okay. Whereas if I, if I don't think about it, I could easily just go home, which is what I normally do when I'm really trying to lean out. When I lean out, I skip that, that shake or that meal mm-hmm. that would be right mm-hmm. there. And I try and stretch out the time before I eat. But when it's the opposite, when I'm trying to build... I'm using any time, any time that I feel like I can eat, I'm going to eat. That's how, because it's so hard for me to get that calorie intake. Now, remember that, you know, when we have this conversation, like there's, there's a difference when we recommend and we talk about things about health. And then when we talk about when you're looking for, you know, performance or aesthetics or pushing limits and goals, right. like there's, there's different, you're going to break right. some of the rules. Yeah. Cause if it's for health, I would just tell you to listen to your body. If you're trying to force yeah. feed yourself. That's not ideal, right? But if you're trying to gain muscle and you want to push your body outside of a particular, like, like, you know, here's the deal. My body, if I just listen to it and kind of, you know, eat the the way my body tells me to and train the way, my body will sit around 187 pounds and I'm relatively lean. My body will sit around 9 or 10% body fat. That's about it. If I want to get up to 200 pounds, I have to push it a little bit. And that's just, you know, that's just a decision that you're going to have to make. But the mistake that I see to with uh, that I made as a kid that I I understand now was I used to ju- use that as a justification to eat whatever the fuck I wanted to, and it it never resulted in a major. I mean, I would put weight on, and so in my head I thought I was doing well because I'd see the scale go no, up. The but then when I turn back around to lean back out, I would be like the same person again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck did I do all that mm-hmm. for? So don't use it as a an excuse to eat whatever the fuck you want. Target your healthy foods, your whole natural foods first. And then if you need to use a uh, you know, highly palatable food to help push you over there, I, I, I do recommend that. And by the way, if your metabolism is getting so amped that you're finding yourself having to eat four or 5,000 calories, do a little cut. Put yourself on a cut for right. for three weeks or four weeks. It'll you'll lose some body fat. Yes, you're not going to gain muscle. Yes, but your metabolism will will adapt downward a little bit, and then you'll find that you'll start gaining again when you go back to eating your three four thousand calories. Next up is Sprickers. When will we see reverse dieting enter the mainstream? Any guesses about what bullshit supplement will accompany this <laughs> event? Uh, I don't think it'll ever enter the mainstream because I don't think this is a problem that the mainstream has to deal with reverse this is, this is what, yeah I don't think this is what the I think the mainstream does have to deal with is they don't they yeah. don't give a fuck about they it they ignore well, it yeah. well what yeah. I like the average person you you know I'm thinking like people that I have had to coach and work with reverse dieting are ones that have really restricted themselves done the crazy dieting I don't yeah. know if that's necessarily going to enter the mainstream but if it does and if there is a supplement company that'll accompany it the way I predict it would look is it would be a powder, meal replacement powder. Mm. And what they would do is they would say, eat like you normally do, and then this is the powder you take for week one. This is the powder you, and then slowly they'll increase your calories. Oh, wow. Uh, Just to map it all out for you. Oh, that's actually brilliant. Yeah. That's actually, maybe we'll do that. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be the only way. Oh, no, that makes, I mean. Here's your proper dose of calories. Right. No, let's be honest. I mean, that's what, I guarantee that's what the the market would demand or want. They want things as simple and easy as possible. I don't want to have to count my calories to track that. So you're right. Like, here you go. Here's your shake. And basically over the course of, you know, eight to 12 weeks, it's a basically a hundred to 500 calorie bump mm-hmm. in the diet. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I just, cause it takes all the guests. Honestly, if that was the case, yeah. I think that would be a better choice of a supplement to do that. I think that's kind of a clever, mm-hmm. smart, a smart thing to do. 
what I, I what I won't be a fan of is like what we see with like the all the fasting protocols that you see now with all the branched chain amino mm-hmm. acids and the oh, yeah. you know the anabolic fasting. Like, I haven't seen that kid pop up lately. What's no. what's going on with that guy? Have you know. seen him in a while? No. I, Do either one of you guys sort of fizzled fall? out? Yeah, I remember that was. A, I haven't heard anything from mm-hmm. from that side. I haven't looked over there in a while. But I, I could foresee them maybe also, and this would be more to the like the bodybuilding crowd is uh, because here's one of the <laughs> the biggest obstacle that I encounter when I try to reverse diet someone is, but I'm going to gain weight. And I tell them, well, you're going to probably gain a little bit of weight when you reverse diet. Mm. So I could foresee maybe a supplement targeting them and saying, hey, while you're reverse dieting, take this product. It'll minimize any fat gain and maximize the metabolism boost. Mm. And so what they'll do is they'll put in that supplement Fat mobilizers, yeah. Stoop. you know, like carnitine <laughs> and lipotro- lipotropics, you know, that help the liver, you know, process or burn body fat. And by the way, this has been around for, yeah. I've seen this in some iteration over the last 20 years, probably about five separate different times. And so they'll throw in lipotropics, like certain amino acids and certain things that help the fat, the, the liver metabolize fat. And while you're reverse dieting, this will minimize weight gain and help you speed up your metabolism. So just help the process. I could see some bullshit like that. Mm. And if I didn't, if I didn't have any integrity, I swear to God, I'd be on the on the, on the board of some of these supplement <laughs> companies coming out with all this insanity. But you know, here's the thing with reverse dieting. I mean, reverse dieting, I think, needs to be or should always be combined with resistance training, because I I, I do see people talk about reverse dieting as, without that. Yeah, that's just stupid. Yeah, you just just slowly increase your calories and don't change your activity level. I've seen people not emphasize the that you need to send another signal or send a signal to the body that you want to build muscle and strength. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, that's I've re- seen that they haven't even said that. They just said, oh, this is all you do. You just reverse diet. Oh, that's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I feel like you have to. Because if You, you have, have to. You need those calories to go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to magically just increase your metabolism. They need to go to work. No. You know? Yep, yep. They, I mean, you will get a little bit of a metabolism boost just from increasing your calories, but not much. Um, and it would make well, sure you're manipulating leptin and ghrelin and stuff like that. So you're going to yeah. see a little bit of a, 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 a boost mm-hmm. and, and benefit from that. But as far as, you know, long lasting, like you're going to need to put some lean, yeah. lean body mass yeah. on. Ideally, the way you would, you would do this is, is you would, if you're a deconditioned, like inactive person and you want to lose a lot of weight is I would, the way I would do it is I'd say, don't change your food intake at all. Start lifting weights after about three to four weeks. When you start to see strength gains really come up, then slowly increase your calories then when you get them to a point where you're comfortable dropping them by about 500 to 700 and you know that that new amount is something you can live with, now you're ready to start dieting. You know, the hardest thing that I had with clients that I had to re- reverse diet is is the discipline to stay stay true to the whole foods and good food because typically somebody who has, has to reverse diet or has fucked their metabolism up is a classic binge starver. They binge hard where they eat garbage foods and they just fuck it. They're off the off the wagon. They eat whatever the fuck they mm-hmm. want. And then they, you know, have the purge mentality where they don't eat anything. They starve, starve the body. So if you could just get those people to just eat whole natural foods whenever you're hungry. Like so this is what I tell a reverse diet. Like yeah, don't we, restrict her. Yeah, we don't even need to get really crazy about calories and how much to move because people start asking questions like that. Should I move up one hundred or two hundred? And it's like, dude, there's so many variables with people. What works really well is resist the urge to want to go eat fucking garbage like you've probably done in the past when you feel that appetite start to kick up. Feed the body whole natural foods and weight tra- and strength train, like you said, because you'll be strength training, and if you're sending that signal to build muscle, it's going to want to, and you can go ahead and keep feeding it, but feed it good whole natural foods. Like Stay away from the processed, hyperpalatable type of foods and the garbage because that's where they get in trouble is trying to fit that into their macros along with their reverse diet. Like Get away from the, let's try and follow a macro profile and fit the types of high, the foods that I want to put in there because it comes in a wrapper and it tastes good and it's part of my lifestyle. Get that the fuck out of the diet. Eat whole natural foods. Feed the body when it tells you that it's hungry, and strength train. And you'll it'll be it's crazy. The body will just na- the body will naturally tell you when it needs more calories. We should we up. should document a nice reverse diet after the six weeks after our six weeks. Yeah, that might be kind of a cool thing. You I may have to do one. Yeah. Justin, after mine, as I say, sure. Justin would be the cool one because for me it won't make a big difference because I'm not going to do a, a, a heavy. I'm doing a hard cut. Yeah, I'm going two two yeah. two. So it's like I'm I'm going right along. I mean, I'm doing. Yeah, a hard I'm cut ramping too up. With you. Yeah, to that. So it's going to be a pretty hard cut. Yeah, you me. will be a cool one because you. Already, you've already expressed that you're not hitting a lot of calories right now. Yeah. It'll be interesting when you start reintroducing other foods to see if you have any reactions to you know anything. Right. 
Next question is from My Fit Food Diary. What are your thoughts on the keto community's use of keto products like low carb breads or other keto versions of commonly carb dense foods? So there's two sides of me that have different opinions on this. The one side of me is didn't we the, just find out that bread was keto? Yeah, yeah, yeah so not keto, <laughs> oh, paleo. Oh, paleo. paleo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, what one side of me, you know, says, "Oh, this is cool. It's going to make it easier for people to." stay within the macros that they want and all that stuff. The other side of me is a purist. Mm. And this is the side of me that the same opinion I have when I look at the, the, the burger patties that are for vegans yes, vegan, or the sausage, say. you know, that's for vegans. It's like, tastes just like chicken. Yeah, It's like, okay, you have taken, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're creating a chemical shit storm or a highly processed food to fit within your nutrition Profile or whatever this new diet is. Go eat a fucking burger. Yeah. yeah, here's the way I look at it. like it's they're trying to it's like they're trying to you're trying to go keto but you don't want to be keto. Yeah. A lot of the benefits of going keto for people who find benefits of going keto and I want to make sure I say that because it's not for everybody is the avoidance of these types of foods. And I do understand that they can make you know bread like foods that that will fit within. But the in order to do that, they this have is to, the market just trying to fucking yeah. feed into your guys' <laughs> feed into yeah. your weakness. Yes, mm-hmm. it's just the market trying to make money off of you. That's mm-hmm. like because they know that they know a bunch yeah. of people that are restricting keto cookies. Yeah, right, that and that is part of the reason why I don't like all that stuff, dude. Yeah. It's like it's it, don't follow that. Then follow a diet that's more realistic that you can actually follow. Or who gives a fuck if it knocks you out of ketosis for a day because you had a fucking sourdough bread? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eat it every once in a while. Yeah. Enjoy it. Like it, It's it, because- the- I hate the, like, we have to follow this specific diet. Like, you don't have to follow the keto giant diet speci- just to a T. Like, you don't have to do that. Yeah, unless it's a medical, you know, reason. Right. Not okay, really. exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's exceptions to every yeah. rule. But my point is most people- that are doing the keto diet right now are doing it because it's become popular over the last three years. Oh my yeah. God, I just heard, where was I? Oh, I was in uh, Napa. So keto right now? I was in Napa and there was a, a, a woman doing the wine tasting or whatever. She obviously doesn't understand what keto is. And they're giving the, you know, the, the, the samples of wine and the guys, you know, they're handing out like bread and cheese and stuff. She's like, this oh, keto friendly. she goes, no, 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 I can't have the bread. I can just have the cheese. I'm on a keto diet. And I'm, she's like a, a woman in her like, oh my God. she's like in her fifties and she's doesn't look like she's ever worked out. And Jessica and I looked at each other like, whoa, does she not understand what keto is? Cause she just <laughs> drank three glasses of wine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, you're drinking it, grape juice. keto well, friendly. That's the problem that I have with these diets is they, they talk about things like that. People don't really understand the science behind it of like, yeah. what is it really supposed to be doing for you? And then they com- they combine look, it. And I've told you this. I've ran into this more often than the other way. It's it's rare I meet somebody that really understands keto and follows it properly. It's more common that I meet somebody who's, you know, following the keto diet, quote unquote, for four to five days of the week. And then on weekends, they enjoy themselves. Yeah, and right. it's like you're giving your, you have no idea you're setting yourself up in a way way shittier situation by doing that than like living in a very more balanced lifestyle every day of the week versus re- restricting well, it's because when they go off they go off yeah you go off and then your body yeah. start you get that little bit of carbohydrate you yeah. got three glasses of wine and now the fucking yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. god this waffle is keto yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you. i mean like again if bread exist bread was invented with grains bread has always been made with grains so and grains are definitely not Keto. They don't work with keto. They're carbohydrate based. When they go to make a bread or something that tastes like bread, but also be keto, they have to get really fucking creative. Yeah. And that usually means a lot of things Lots that are- of science. Yeah. That usually means things that may be not so good for you. Now, this may not be totally true with keto breads because I've seen some of them. Although I have yet to see a truly keto bread because the ones that say keto are typically just lower carb. So you, you'll eat like- a small slice of it, and it's ten grams of carbs instead of you know thirty. Yeah, and then you're probably at a keto, keto, real ketosis anyway. But this again, the, the vegan stuff is the one that really cracks me up because I'll go and I'll see, you know, oh you gotta I'll, you know you gotta try this this burger patty tastes just like meat but it's 100 percent vegan and I flip over the box and there's a million ingredients, yeah. literally a million because they had to they made vegetables taste like meat. Yeah, and if you're so against eating animals, why do you want it to taste like an animal? 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This why, why, why don't you have a taste like yeah. vegetables? Yeah. Stay in your camp. I don't want to eat. <laughs> Stay in your yeah. lane. Stay in your lane. I'm not. A, I'm not a cannibal, but I do like my human flavored protein powder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> exactly, dude. Right? If it's such a moral like dilemma, yeah. like don't have it taste like what you are against. Uh, That's it. You're a closet cannibal. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> so check this out. Uh, we all have different social media pages with different content. You can find mine on Instagram at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. Also, we have a bunch of free guides. Some of them help you burn body fat. Some of them help you build particular parts of your body. They're all free. Just go to mindpumpfree.com. You can download all of them. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>